Now, I'm not here to tell you that I know exactly what you are going through. I'm not here to tell you that I feel your pain. I don't pretend to know the depths of what you are feeling right now. But I do know what it feels like to be scared. And I do know what it feels like to be sad. And I do know what it feels like to be rejected. And more importantly, I know what it feels like to be loved. I grew up in a small town. I went to a small rural high school. There were some kids in my class that were different than me. And sometimes I wasn't kind to them. I didn't know it at the time, but I know now that they were gay. I regret not treating them with the kindness, dignity, and respect, the love that they deserved. For that, I sincerely and humbly apologize. Over the intervening years, my heart has changed. It has changed because of you. It has changed because I've gotten to know many of you. You have been very patient with me as I went through this change. You even helped me learn the right letters in the alphabet in the right order, even though you keep adding new ones. <laughs> you have been kind to me. Jim DeBacchus even told me I dress nice once, and I know he's lying. <laughs> You have treated me with the kindness, dignity, respect, the love that I very often did not deserve. And it has made me love you. But now we are here. We are here because 49 beautiful, amazing people are gone. These are not just statistics. These were individuals. These were human beings. They each have a story. They each had dreams, goals, talents, friends, family. They are you and they are me. And one night they went out to relax, to laugh, to connect, to forget, to remember. And in a few minutes of chaos and terror, they were gone. I believe that we can all agree that we have come a long way as a society when it comes to our acceptance and understanding of the LGBTQ community. Did I get it right? Right. However, there has been something about this tragedy that has very much troubled me. I believe that there is a question, two questions actually, that each of us needs to ask ourselves in our heart of hearts, and I'm speaking now to the straight community. How did you feel when you heard that 49 people had been gunned down by a self-proclaimed terrorist? That's the easy question. Here's the hard one. Did that feeling change when you found out that the shooting was at a gay bar at 2 a.m. in the morning? If that feeling changed, then we're doing something wrong. So now we find ourselves at a crossroads, a crossroads of hate and terror. How do we respond? How do you respond? Do we lash out with anger, hate, and mistrust? Or do we, as Abraham Lincoln begged us, appeal to the better angels of our nature. Usually when tragedy occurs, we see our nation come together. I was saddened yesterday to see far too many retreating to their overworn policy corners and demagoguery. Let me be clear, there are no simple policy answers to this tragedy. Today, Today, we need fewer Republicans and fewer Democrats and more Americans. The solution doesn't exist doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. The greatest generations in the history of the world were never innately great. They became great because of how they responded. Ultimately, there is only one way for us to come together. It must happen at a purse class. May we forgive someone that has wronged us, and perhaps, most importantly, try to love someone that is different from us. For my straight friends, might I suggest starting with someone who is gay? I leave you with the words of Lyndon B. Johnson. They were spoken at another very sad time in our history, the death of John F. Kennedy. He said this, 
Our enemies have always made the same mistake. In my lifetime, you. Now you know a little something about hate. And you know a little something about persecution. But you also know something about loving, blessing, and doing good. What our country needs more than ever is less politics. From the Utah legislature, 